Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk. Welcome to GitOpsCon. Um, shout out to the organizers of this conference for the opportunity to speak. The title of my talk is Hiding in Plain Sight, is mostly around how Flux lets you store your sensitive credentials in Git. My name is Onyekore Suntochi, a little about myself. I'm a developer experience engineer at WeaveWorks, uh, where I work mostly on Flux. I'm a maintainer of the notification controller project. You can connect with me on Twitter or at Sumtochi Ama. So just a quick refresher for people who are just hearing about Flux or GitOps for the first time. This is GitOps Con, so I'm sure you have more talks, you know, delving deep into it. GitOps is an operations methodology. It's a way of deploying your applications and infrastructure where the entire system is described declaratively, just like with Kubernetes and its manifest. And this declarative manifest is stored in a version controlled system such as Git. And Flux sits at number four, you know, software agents ensure correct correctness and reconcile on divergence. It's Flux is a set of controllers that sits on your cluster. It pulls your defined declarative state from Git and then applies it on the cluster and periodically reconciles it to ensure that what you defined in Git matches the state on the cluster. So it applies your deployments, your service accounts, other resources, which include secrets. So we want to GitOps everything. GitOps brings a lot of business value. It's you know, increased velocities, you know, developers can focus on developing and makes it easy for the infrastructure team to set up. It gives re re repeatability. And we also want to do this for secrets, right? There's a benefit to managing secrets with GitOps. It gives increased security. Uh, any changes to your secrets, whether accidental or malicious, uh, you can be sure that they are, they are going to be reverted within a reasonable time frame. I don't know if anyone has ever deleted you know, a secret on a production cluster. You know, if a secret gets deleted, it's going to be recreated. It also gives you an audit log since there's a version controlled history of every change to the file. Uh, the, you can put in an approval process so that before any change changes are made, you know, someone from a particular team has to approve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of this is great, right? But how do we store these files in Git since they contain sensitive information, right? You don't want just they contain maybe passwords, database connections, usernames, whatever it might be, configuration files. Uh, you don't just want anyone who has access to, you know, your repository to be able to have access to the secrets. Yeah, so the, of the <coughs> answer is to encrypt. Flux enlists the help of two projects, um, Mozilla Sops and Sealed Secrets from Vietnamese Labs. This is the Abo Open Source project. This is an example of a collaboration across projects in the open source piece. So for sealed secrets, sealed secrets has a dedicated controller that runs outside of Flux that is used to decrypt the secrets. And it has a cube seal, a CLI called cube seal that is used to increase the secrets. So everything is cube seal manages the secrets, it creates the secrets, you know, encrypts and decrypts. Everything just happens on its own. You ha you'd have to deploy it into your cluster. It doesn't come you know, packaged in with Flux, you'd have to deploy it. So if you're already using kubeseal, this is like a very handy solution. So <clears throat> you would use the kubeseal CLI to encrypt your sensitive file, your secrets. Kubeseal CLI will include the, the encrypted data in the sealed secrets custom resource. The kubeseal controller recognizes this resource and when you push this file to Git, on its next run, Flux pulls it and applies it on the cluster. It creates the sealed secret custom resource. Then the kubeseal controller notices the custom resource and then acts on it, you know, 
<clears throat> decrypts and then applies the secrets in the cluster. So that's basically the flow, you know, you encrypt using the kubectl CLI. Um, this produces a custom resource file. It pushes to Git, flux, pulls the file, applies it on the cluster, and then the kubectl controller sees the custom resource, decrypts it, and then applies it to the secrets. So Mozilla SOPS is also another project. Um, Flux uses the Mozilla SOPS library, so you know it comes automatically with Flux. Um, SOPS uses open source technologies such as OpenPGP and Age. Age is the modern, you know, preferred solution for encryption. So with this, um, with it also integrates with various cloud providers like GCP KMS, Azure, Key Vault, you know, HashiCorp Vault. So, but with with open PG, open PGP and age, you can pick your key format. You know, that doesn't get with kubectl, you don't get to pick your key format or everything. Kubectl, you know, makes that decision for you because it does everything on its own. You can pick, you can specify your key format, you know, you provide subs with the key and then it decrypts it for you and it encrypts the file for you. So you would tell subs to only encrypt the data field because um flux would requires you to only encrypt the data field. You'd encrypt the data field with subcli, you know, passing in the, the required fly, flag. You know, if it's GPG, you need to, PGP, you need to pass in the fingerprint with GCP KMS, you know, the resource ID, you specify the correct flag and also tell subs to only encrypt a particular, you could give it a regex, so it only encrypts particular fields. When subs has encrypted the file, you push it to Git. Now Flux would pull the encrypted, the file with parts of it encrypted. It's um, beforehand you would specify in the customized custom resource that you know you are using Flux to encrypt the secrets. So Flux would check the file and if it's encrypted with with SOPS, it will decrypt it using the SOPS library, and then apply apply the, this will produce, after decryption, apply the secrets on the cluster. So this is one way, uh, this is another way that Flux lets you store, you know, your secrets encrypted in, in your Git repository. So there's just, there's three steps here. You, we encrypt, push to Git, you know, normally it's encrypt, decrypt, but because we are using GitHub, there's, we push to Git first and have Flux pull the file and either decrypt it itself if you're using SOPS or you know the kubectl controller if you're using sealed secrets. So that's the three major steps. So I've tried to keep it short and sweet because it's a lightning talk and I'm trying to stick to 10 minutes. If you need further guide, like we have docs on, on both of them, so you could take a look at the links. So also please do stop by at Flogs Boots where always looking forward to meeting new people interested in flux or looking to know what we're up about you know there's the flux boots online and there's one in acupcon thank you for 10 minutes of your time you can connect with me on twitter and github at somtochi thank you <laughs>